Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are getting started with chapter two of the set B and looking forward to the questions of the chapter two. Just for your kind information, once again, the chapter two will have five questions out of 40 and contributing with five marks out of your 40 marks altogether. So yes, it is yet important chapter and you need to make sure that you will be able to answer five questions from this chapter once you're through with all the sample questions from this particular chapter. So getting started with the very first question from this chapter, which is question number nine. Given the following statements about the relationship between the software development activities and the test activities in the software development lifecycle. If you remember, we heard and understood about the good characteristics of testing which can be applied to any development models in chapter 2, the very first topic, which is 2.1. And there we understood about the four standard good characteristics of testing. And here they are trying to ask you the same thing. If you look at the statements here, number one says each development activity should have corresponding testing activity. And yes, that's absolutely correct because we look forward to have alignment to those of the development activity and we push our test teams to be there at the development phases to review the work products when they're available early in the life cycle. So one is absolutely correct. Two, reviewing should start as soon as final versions of the documents are available. I think that's where you need to be careful. Most of the statement looks pretty good. Yes, generally we start as soon as something is available, but not the final version. If you remember the good characteristics of testing, it says as soon as the first draft is available. Because once it is finalized and then you review it, it is still a rework, right? You have to reopen the document, work on it and fix the issues. So we always say that you start reviewing a document as soon as the first draft is available rather than waiting for the final documentation. So statement number two is not correct. Three. The test design and implementation of tests should start during the corresponding development activity. Now, the right answer here is that it should be the analysis and design, not the implementation. Implementation happens post that because it requires improvement, you know, in creation of the test environment, talking about prioritization of the test cases, setting up the traceability and lot many other things, talking about automation and so on. So it cannot just happen parallelly with the development activity. So analysis and design is something which can happen as per the good characteristics. So statement number three is also wrong. If you look at the statement number four, it says testing activities should start in the early stages of the software development lifecycle. Absolutely correct. Because as soon as uh, we start with the development lifecycle, testing should not be sitting idle and waiting for the code to be delivered for testing to begin. Actually, testing begins much earlier than dynamic testing in the early stages of the life cycle, which is static testing by reviewing the work products which are available in the life cycle. And these work products can be anything like requirement, design, code, workflow, control flow, use cases, anything which you have available to you. So putting it all together, when you see the statements here, one and four are correct. So the right answer is D, two is one and four, and false is two and three as per the good characteristics of testing applied to any test model, any development model. Let's look at the next question here, question number 10, which says, given that the testing being performed has the following attributes. Now this question is from the test levels and instead of asking you a straightforward question on a particular test level, they're trying to tell you the different characteristics put together and asking you other way around that which testing is being performed. So the three points which are given to you here is based on interface testing. Now that's the very first, uh, sorry, interface specification. So that's the very first hint given to you that we are talking about interfaces, which is equivalent to integration or communication between the modules or components or whatsoever. So they have not specified whether it is between the system or between the components. But yeah, this is just given you interface, right? So it can be integration testing. Second, focus on finding failures in communication. Of course, if you remember from the tutorial, integration is equal to interfaces, is equal to communication, is equal to data flow, all these are same. So interface and communication, both the statements tell us that it is integration testing. And then comes the point number three, which says the test approach uses both functional 
and structural test type. If you remember, this particular technique, that is the functional, is all about component integration system and acceptance are all my functional test levels. But anything other than that is my non-functional levels, like performance, security, are all called as non-functional. And on the other hand, structural test types is basically about white box testing, right? Doing at the back end. And yes, integration and components are good candidates where white box testing can be conducted. Rest for system and all, you can do the black box, right? So right now they are not talking about anything on the component. So the right answer here is B, sorry, the right answer here is A, integration testing. Okay, so which clearly tells us that interfaces, communication, and makes use of functional as well as structural test types. Let's look at the next question here, which is question number 11. Which of the following statement about the test types and the test levels is correct? Now, this question is a combination of everything what you covered in 2.2 and 2.3 of chapter 2. So let's look at the statement here. Statement number A or option A, functional and non-functional testing can be performed at system and acceptance test levels, while white box testing is restricted to component and integration testing. Just for your kind understanding, there are no hard and fast rules defined anywhere that white box testing is limited to component and integration. It is always that any of the approach, be it white box or black box, can be applied to any test level. Okay, it's not restricted to a particular test level. So that's not correct. B, functional testing can be performed at any test level while white box is restricted to component. No, it's just the best practice that component testing makes use of white box testing as an approach. But it's not written anywhere that unit testing or component testing is a type of white box or white box is a type of unit testing. A lot of us have this myth as an understanding that component testing is a type of white box testing or white box testing is a type of component testing. No, it's not restricted. Even performance testing can be done at white box level or, you know, you know, talk about security testing, this is done at the code level. It's just the approach. Any of the test levels can make use of these approaches to organize, organize and conduct the test levels. So B, in fact, is not correct. Let's look at C. It is possible to perform functional, non-functional, and white box testing at any level. Yeah, looks pretty much correct because functional testing, non-functional testing, and white box testing is an approach which can be applied at any test level. So functional is of course like unit integration system and acceptance, but how come non-functional can be done at these levels? Because performance testing, security testing, usability testing, these are all non-functional levels but they do not wait to get surprises after system testing. You can always begin with non-functional testing much earlier in the life cycle, right, right from the design phase, or at least from the component testing that each program can be tested for any kind of unreachable code or any kind of memory leak, any kind of uh, you know undefined variable and sort of issues, or checking the response time at the program level to make sure that it is going to meet the expectation of the performance test or performance goals. So yes, C seems to be looking correct, but let's cross check with D. Functional and non-functional testing can be performed at any test level, while white box testing is restricted to component and integration. Now, again, not correct. When A is not correct, then D is also not right. So the right answer here is C, it is possible to perform functional, non-functional, and white box testing at any test level. Now that gives us a very clear picture that how exactly test levels and test types can be asked to you during the examination. We've got two more questions which we'll cover up on in the next tutorial. Stay tuned for that. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.